Good, all right, so well. well let, let me get this, uh, hold on. Okay. Hold on okay. Okay. All okay. set? Yeah. All right, good. All right. Let's start the morning off off right with a little bit of Cabernet. <laughs> <laughs> My boss, who's a big wine enthusiast, he says your wine is excellent. Oh, that's very nice to, uh, to hear. We, um, we work really hard. Cheers. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. All right. I'll give a sample. Must, one must always taste. Very good. It's still really young. Get the nose. Yeah, it's good. You know, it's a 2013. So it's a little older than most releases out there, but that's intentional. We do a we do a real long barrel age of um, almost three years, between 30 and 34 months, and then of course uh, another year in the bottle. So we're a little behind the curve um, with most of, of Walla Walla, but I think uh, but that's okay. You know, yeah. I think a little more age on the wine is great, and it's 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 can go in the cellar for a while too. So, well, you started this journey in 2005, and you've kept with it. What brought you to it in the first place, and what keeps you going? You know, a um, couple of things. Uh, I found that I well, first of all, I love wine. <laughs> Start off with that, <laughs> and I have since before I was supposed to love wine uh, back in high school. Um, and there was a couple things that sort of lined up. One was the fact that wine had come to Eastern Washington, which was happening sort of late 70s, early 80s, very slowly with uh, Leonetti um, and Woodward Canyon and yep. some of the early, early winemakers and LeCole as well, Marty over at LeCole. So that was beginning to bubble. Um, I was getting home less and less frequently. I'm from Yakima originally, and I just I wasn't getting back to see my dad and, and my brothers as much as I wanted to. Um, my own fault, you know, just sure. trying to make time with a busy schedule. And I thought, haha, this is a way that will force me to return and for something that I think we can all, as a family, enjoy together. So that was another thing. And the third part of the equation was meeting Eric Dunham, um, with, quite by chance. Uh, when I reached out to him and the winery for uh, uh, one of his wines that he made to serve at my wedding reception, which was in right. 2002. Florida, right? Yeah. We, we, my wife and I, who's, uh, she's from Miami. We were married in Miami, and I wanted to have Washington wine represented in the, <laughs> in the dinner. So those three things kind of came and aligned and, um, and started the ball rolling to the point where I reached out to Eric and a couple of years later and said, you know, I kind of think I might want to try this. Are you able to partner with me on this and he didn't bat an eye said absolutely and shook hands and I remember his first question to me was what kind of wine do you like to drink and I said well I like Cabernet and he said well let's make a Cabernet and I said well that makes sense <laughs> and on that we were off and running so pursued by bear of course from the winner's tale Shakespeare's yeah yep. uh, as if the entire audience is going to know that well, of course you know that everyone but <laughs> that's part of the story but yes please well uh, I remember being at the University of Washington and us seeing that and just yep. going what is that where, where did this come from it just seemed very random yeah um why was that chosen by you as the name for your wine well it wasn't my first choice okay i was trying to find something naming something is incredibly difficult mm -hmm. whether it be a child or a wine not easy <laughs> anyway i um you know i tried to incorporate a little bit of my what i do as an actor into this um the very first thought process with, between Eric and myself was something with our last names combined. And so we tried every variation we could think of and it always sounded like we were making a scotch. So that wasn't going to work. Um, then I thought of things like downstage and stage left and then I was like, it just kind of threw me into this, oh there's that great stage direction, Exit Pursued by a Bear, which is of all of Shakespeare's work, the most descriptive stage direction he ever wrote and, and I think a little bit funny. Um, although there's a tragic end to it because the actor doesn't make it very far <laughs> before the bear gets him. Um, and I just sort of, st it stuck with me. And I thought, no, let's, let's just call it Pursued by Bear. And immediately gives you a visual so I knew what the label was probably going to look like. Sure. And I thought it made a nice story. And it, you know, it's a little bit about what I do as an actor yeah, working on stage giant. and it seemed right. I read that Fred Savage pop that into your head. Is that true? No, actually, I don't know how that came about. That's it was, it was, has it's a Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to go into the Wikipedia yeah. page and change that. Someone, that's a responsibility for someone out there. <laughs> it was actually, um, 
uh, s through a sequence of events, we were going, the, the day that I thought about the name, we were actually coming out of Napa, California, uh, and we were coming back to Los Angeles, and my wife is good friends with Steve Martin, and we were going to have dinner with Steve. And so we had dinner with Steve, who I don't really know even well enough to call him Steve, but I, you know, and he's been a, a, a hero of mine since, I mean, since I first heard of him, so Grace. way back in the 70s, absolutely. My very first check that I ever wrote when I went to college at the University of Washington was for the tickets to go see Steve Martin. Wow. I think it was the um, it was the wild and crazy yep. guy tour with the white suit and the banjo and the arrow through his head. <laughs> anyway, I have fond memories of that, of course. Anyway, we, there we were sitting at Steve's house and I had had enough wine at that point to feel confident to ask him what he thought about that as a name, and he gave me a big thumbs up and, and, uh, and said, that's great, and, I, and that's all I needed. So <laughs> with that validation, I was on my way. Fantastic. Um, I, Eric Dunn, we talked. So just mm -hmm. Eric Dunn, why was that? It was, it was the place for you because you hit it off with Eric? After, a couple of reasons, meeting? actually, yeah. Uh, Dunham Cellars has, has been around for a while. They were the, at the eighth or the ninth bonded winery, so they were very early on. Um, in the process, so they, they had all the facilities, everything was in place, the winery was in place, but more importantly, it was really the people. It was the relationship with Mike, who was Eric's dad, mm -hmm. and Eric as well. And, uh, and the environment that they had there was really family, really, really relatable to me. They welcomed me in um, sure. and, just, and were willing to share their knowledge and their experience, not only of winemaking, but of all the different personalities that live in Walla Walla and the surrounding area. Um, Eric introduced me to all these wonderful people and I just felt really like I was with my family. And that, that felt so comfortable to me that I was able to say, hey, would you allow me to also join in this process with you? And he was like, great, let's do it. Excellent. Uh, and you use grapes from the Yakima Valley, right? Is that a bit of a shout out to your hometown? Yeah, we, you know, I source from, we source from all over. We started off with grapes that were sort of more closer up valley. So mm -hmm. they are more um, uh, Lewis. We were doing some work with Lewis up there, uh, which is sort of near Zilla and Prosser and some of those communities there. So, uh, and I still source from De Brule, which is uh, above Prosser. Um, so, yeah, more c closer to Yakima. Um, and then I've sort of sp spread out, and part of the joy of this experience is the learning process and discovering what different areas within Washington State can produce for in terms of quality and types of flavor profiles and things like that. So, yeah, so I've started to, you know, go out and search <laughs> around, and I enjoy that process a lot. Thank you, Mount St. Helens, right? Yes, thank you, Mount St. Helens, and thank you, the, the floods, the, I think the Missoula floods, uh, for the cataclysmic floods, they talk about them, from tens of thousands of years ago that washed down all this wonderful uh, soil that's perfect for growing grapes. Um, your label has three, uh, you have a new one, Rosé, right yeah. now, I believe. Yeah. Do you plan on expanding on that, or are you happy with the three right now? I'm pretty happy with the three. I think um, with each new um, bottle that I produce, um, the, uh, you know, you learn so much, you know, and with the rosé, we started, I think our first vintage was 2015 with 75 cases of rosé, which you and I could probably drink together. Right, right. Anyway, so it just, I just wanted to see if the blend that I had in mind was actually um, going to work, and turns out it would work too well. So we're now at 250 cases for the 2017, and I'll probably try and double that for the next year. And it's just finding the right source. And I use a, a blend. So it's Grenache, Mouvedre, Cinso, these three varietals, very common in um, south of France, in the Bandol area. It's kind of what it's known for. So I just, I just copied them. I just said, you know, I love drinking that wine from there. Can we reproduce something similar here in, in the Columbia Valley? And it turns out we did. So. so you're kind of producing your, just your favorite wines pretty much. Pretty much. much pretty much. The stuff I like to drink. <laughs> Exactly. I've got a Cabernet. I've got a fantastic Syrah. We all know that Syrah from Washington is unparalleled. I yeah. think it's just the best. And then a rosé is just a fun, a fun thing to be able to share with friends, you know. <laughs> Something easy. Right, just check. Everything's going all right. Looking okay. We haven't scared anybody yet? Nope. Not too much? We're all good. Okay. Well. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> My cell phone is holding on. Yeah. Um, for my Yakima viewers, you grew up in Yakima, you yep. graduated from Eisenhower High School. Yep. Um, what was your favorite part about growing up in Yakima? Oh gosh, you know, the, th the kind of things that you don't appreciate when you're that age, and the things that I look <laughs> back on, you know what I mean? <laughs> and the things that I look back on now with just a, some, such fondness and just, 
uh, just wonderful memories. You know, the idea, the idea that you can actually just hop on your bike in the summer, ride over, visit your friends. You know, I'm a New York City native now, or a dweller, I should say, not native, <laughs> but dweller. And, uh, you know, it's a whole different way of living and dealing with, uh, with the world. And Yakima was pretty idyllic. Um, I spent a lot of time just hanging out with friends in nature, mm -hmm. you know, and that's something that I really miss. Um, I also grew up on the golf course. My dad was a big golfer. Um, I became a big golfer because of that, as did my brothers. So we spent a lot of time, you know, hitting golf balls out on the range and that. So that was a big part of the summer. And also the seasons, you know, they're very distinct and they all come with their own sort of sensory expressions. You know, sure. fall is all about the harvest. It's all about the burning leaves, although I don't know if you can burn it anymore. <laughs> you know, that was one of the things I remember. Winter, just kind of this kind of hazy, the, the kind of low speed kind of feeling throughout the valley. And then, of course, spring comes and you're so excited about the idea that finally you're going to emerge. Yeah. And, uh, and along with that, because I was on the golf team, came really cold cold 18-hole uh, rounds after school, and I can remember at the Elks or at the YCC playing golf like that. So just, I don't know, everything just sort of spills together. Just kind of a uh, classic Americana. Pretty that. similar, I think, yeah. Um, and when you come from a smaller community like that, you know, you get to experience that. Um, quite different than, than New York City, of course, or sure. Los Angeles. Sure, yeah. and you went from there to the University of Washington, you graduated, and only a few years later, your acting debut, you are leading a big budget movie for Universal Dune. Yes, yes. That must have been overwhelming. It was, um, uh, you know, I was kind of, in, in a very good way, uh, uh, unaware. I was pretty naive. <laughs> I, I knew what was happening and what was around me, but I didn't have a context. I had graduated from, from the University of Washington, the training program there in 82. I'd gone to work at Ashland for a season. Um, all my sights and my direction were focused on New York stage, getting there and living there and hopefully working in an off-Broadway off or maybe sure. off-Broadway if I got lucky, or being hired to go work in repertory theater somewhere regionally around the country. And that was where I was, what I was going to do. And I, by chance, I, I was in the right place at the right time and auditioned for the, for the movie in Seattle. And they brought me to L.A. and I met David Lynch. And we hit it off and uh, screen tested and one thing led to another. But I think in some ways school prepared me so well because in my, I was really focused on work and getting work and felt, conf I had the confidence that comes with, um, you know, not being completely sure. uh, aware, sure. I think. You yeah. just kind of, well, of course I can do it, you know, and that was my, <laughs> that was what I felt. And so, and I just, and doors just kept opening, and I just kept walking through them, and there were more opportunities. And, uh, and what actors you got to work with? Oh my gosh! Jose Ferrer. Oh my Patrick gosh! Patrick Stewart, Max von Sydow. Yeah, yeah. And then he worked with Miguel, his son. Right? Yes, I worked with. Oh, it was wonderful. Um, Jose, lovely guy, um, would always come to work wearing golf pants, and then he would go off, and when he finished, and he would go play golf. We were shooting in Mexico City, yep. and uh, I loved Miguel. I loved Miguel. He's just such a great personality, such a great energy. I always felt like the Cooper. Albert relationship was very special and could have had its own spin-off. You know what I mean? I wish you guys had more scenes in the in the following. I know, I know. Um, but, uh, it was so neat. He was able to do that before his untimely passing. Thank you. I agree. I agree. All right, one more check. I got yeah. just two no. more for you. All good. Yeah. Uh, personally, I the end of Twin Peaks when you were stuck in it or Dale was stuck in it in the lodge for. And I felt personally uh, wounded by that. So I was very pleased yeah. that I don't mind that you're in some dimension right now. Right. You are out. Yes. Dale Cooper, Dale Cooper is, is still functioning and working and somehow trying to figure it all out. <laughs> Good. Yeah. He's been, uh, yeah, he's been released from his bondage. Yeah, thank thank yeah. goodness. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've worked with Lynch on Blue Velvet, Dune, Twin Peaks, mm. maybe some other things that I'm not aware of. Well, Fire Walk With Me we did Fire, oh, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and you were just with them this week. Yes, I was. A for your consideration. Yes. Um, for the uh, for the Emmys. So yeah. You obviously at least could get along with the man. You, you said you got along with him when you first met him. Yeah. What is it about Lynch that makes him so unique? Well, I adore Dave. We're friends. We're very good friends. In fact, we live very close to each other in Los Angeles, and we I visit with him frequently. We reminisce a lot. We talk about maybe things that could come. You know, although he's very he he plays things very close to the vest. Um, you know, we share a common 
um, s certainly a common sense of humor. Um, his vision to me is singular and extraordinary and just so full of possibilities. Um, and I am incredibly grateful to be one of the actors that has worked with him so closely, you know, over the, over the years. Um, he's a Northwest kid. He grew up uh, in parts of Spokane, Montana, Idaho. Um, we have very similar stories about, you know, the kinds of trouble that we got into, the kind of things we did as kids, you know, um, so we share that. And it just felt like, um, and David has said it, he just like he said, he felt like we've known each other for a million years, you know, and, and it's that comfort, that uh, sure. ease, I think, um, that c can create some of the best work. I feel like some of my best work, certainly in this past Twin Peaks, this most recent one, some if not perhaps my best work that I've ever done. Um, and it's David makes that possible. He makes the environment possible and his guidance and his eye sure. um, is what helps make that possible. No, I mean, you went from Dougie to Evil Coop yeah. to finally, finally, <laughs> finally, Dale Coop. Dale, yeah, exactly. And it, it, it seemed like he hadn't missed a day. Yeah, oh, that's very nice of you to say. I was worried. When we no. got close to that Cooper, t you know, waking up, I was like, boy, I hope I can remember what I did, you know. Oh. So I just, and I just let it sort of happen and it was fine. Well, speaking of Dale Cooper, you were nominated and won a Golden Globe in 1990. Yes. You were nominated Long for the ago. same role 27 years later, yeah. something obviously that has never been done. Yeah. What is enduring about, first off, that character, and what is enduring about you, about your work? Oh, gosh. Well, the, I think certainly for the role of Dale Cooper, he is, he is someone that inspires, inspires people, I think. There is a... Um, an innate goodness about him and a sense of righteousness and a moral, he carries a moral compass, I think, um, that people can depend on. He's a man of his word. Um, he's also idiosyncratic. Sure. Um, uh, he's, I mean, wonderful coffee and cherry pie and donuts, etc. <laughs> pine trees. Um, so he's, he's endearing in that way, I think, but he's also serious about his job and his work and he takes his his, his work per, respons responsibly and personal to the point where in this most recent one he may be suffering from a little bit of hubris goes into a place that is very dangerous and feels like he can right a wrong. I mean he's going up against the forces of evil at yep. such a level that you know we're all we always take a deep breath in and, and we're not quite sure how he's going to end up but certainly not unscathed so, um, so he's just a good guy uh, basically, I think. Um, and as to your second part of your question, I think I just have never stopped loving what I do. I've never felt like I, at any time, sort of you know, had it. You know, said, oh, I've got, I've got this acting right. thing done. It's like the, every day, every scene, every moment is interesting and challenging and... Um, and it's n never going to be perfect, never going to be complete, which is great. You know, it's always a work in progress. And much like your wine. Pretty much like the wine. This is a work in progress. This is uh, friends of mine say, you know, you really, so what am I, I'm almost 60 now. So you got, you know, maybe depending on how you go, you got another 25 tries at this. And I'm like, I have only 25 tries. <laughs> and it puts it into perspective. You're like, oh my gosh. So, you know, but at the same time, you know, it's the, the journey. It's all about the journey. Absolutely. Last question. Yeah. This has been fantastic. You're one of a small group of people who have hosted Saturday Night yes. Live. And you actually did the season premiere, Chris Farley's first show, I believe. Yeah. Is, is it as crazy as, is the week leading up to it as crazy as we've yeah. heard? It is. It <laughs> is. And I, I, I think you can interact with it as much or as little as you want. Some people come in and do the table read, and then they just kind of work on the scenes, and then they show up you know, for the rehearsal. And I wanted to be there every step of the way. It reminded me of being in school, to be honest, because there are long hours and the writers, oh, they're young and they're writing and they're eating pizza and they're trying to figure it out. And all the rooms where all the writing teams are working are, you know, they're going through stuff and they're thinking through stuff and they're throwing stuff away. I mean, it's very intense, the environment for those few days <laughs> as they're bringing the show to life and working on these skits. Um, and I was, I really, enjoyed it and welcomed it. They also torture you because the final monologue that I had mm -hmm. didn't really come 
they don't give it to you until the day of the show because wow. they all procrastinate so damn much. Sure. Um, and, uh, They'd say fine-tune. Yeah, they would say fine-tune. Oh, it's not quite ready yet. I'm like, I'm not even sure there's a word on the paper yet, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> James Downey, is, um, I'm speaking to you. Um, anyway, so but they finally bring it in and you do it. And so it's, that, that is almost improv. It's just you see the cue cards and you're kind of, you kind of know roughly where they're going, but you're not exactly sure what's going to happen. So, sure. so the adrenaline is pumping, as you can imagine, um, coursing through your body. <laughs> but and it goes like this, as you can imagine. No doubt. And suddenly it's like you're you're saying uh, thank you to everyone and trying to remember everybody, and it's over. And uh, and that's exactly what it was. It was a, th a thrill, thrill ride. I'd love to do it again sometime. Excellent. Yeah. Kyle. I'd love to do this again. Sometime. Oh, thanks, this Jason. This is just wonderful. Yeah, pleasure to talk with you. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm so glad we were able to pitch this. Absolutely. And, uh, <laughs> oh, God. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, now you can enjoy a little. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Good. Let me get a photo with you with your wine here. Yeah. I'll also put this in the Yakima Herald. Oh, terrific. Yeah. Great. Uh, great. I'll write a movie column for them. Oh, great. The Yakima Herald Republic. Got it. Hey, how are you? Good. Okay, yeah, however you want to, I can, I can hold this too if you want. There we go. Okay. <laughs>